Is he avoiding deep feelings for you? Well, these six signs might give you a clue that he's not able to get really in touch with what's going on inside your heart, let alone his own heart. Now, really quickly, building trust is paramount in a relationship. Let me repeat that. It's paramount. So maybe let me let me reframe that to a successful relationship. And what better way to build trust than to meet your partner's needs? That's right, to meet your partner's needs. See, really, isn't this what this is all? Isn't this what this is all about? Being in relationship is each person has needs that need to be met. And when we actually get attuned to each other, to our partners, and we have a desire to meet those needs, we start to build the, we start to put the blocks together, the building blocks together to building that trust, which actually demonstrates deep feelings for someone. Now, really quickly, I want to share something with you. I watched a contemporary of mine, a uh, short little 60-second uh, video talking about how men want to be your hero, how they want to be your hero in relationship. Men genuine, genuinely want to please women, okay? And he gives the example in the early stage of dating that where you might have a desire for more communication. And you might say something like this, it would feel so great if you could text me every morning and ex every evening, excuse me, I would feel so happy. I would feel so, it would feel so great. I would feel so happy if you do this. And because men are the heroes and they want to please you, they are naturally going to do this. So I want to tell you something that happened to me some years ago. I was uh, communicating with a woman online. Um, and I think we only had one or two text exchanges. And she did this exact same verbiage to me, the exact same verbiage. And you know what I thought? Now, mind you, I'm in this business, so maybe I took it a little bit different than most, but I'm like, wow, she's really demanding. I don't know her. We have no trust built between us. In other words, she was literally making demands on me and I didn't know her that well. And there was no trust built in this relationship. See, we can't have deep feelings for someone until we actually build trust. And you see, today's dating, we have this false sense of trust built when there is incessant communication via text messaging. There is love bombing going on. There's this constant communication early on that creates what's known as artificial intimacy. And because of chemistry, many people believe they have trust with a person when there is strong chemistry with another human being. See, it's, that's not how trust is built. Trust isn't built through chemistry. Certainly, we need chemistry to bond with another. We need chemistry to feel attraction for one another. We need chemistry to be the glue that when there are things not going so right in the relationship, it's the chemistry that keeps us together. But quite frankly, what truly keeps relationships successful is that building of trust. And trust, folks, trust isn't just about fidelity. Trust is about, do I have a, you know, it's about looking out for my partner's best needs. That's what trust is without compromising your own needs. Let me be clear. See, ladies, you have a propensity to overgive to a man, so you're meeting his needs, oftentimes at the expense or the sacrifice of your own needs. And I'm not here to espouse that anyone should do that. You should want, you should want, two people should want to care about each other's needs, to care about the best interests for another human being. Why do you think ghosting happens? People say, I don't want to hurt you. Isn't that there an irony? I don't want to hurt you. And yet ghosting is probably the cruelest thing we can do to a person or disengage communication with a person. But I just didn't want to hurt you. What that mean, what they really mean is I didn't want to pretend, I didn't want to have you believe that there was something more in this relationship than there really is. So I'm just going to cut off communication so you don't feel hurt in the future when this doesn't work out. That's what ghosting really is about. And yet that act alone causes 
mistrust. It causes pain to another human being. And we could say, well, I'm doing it for their best interest. No, if you really are going to do something for someone else's best interest, you'll have a, a conversation with them and talk about your feelings. Now, here's where it gets radically tough. This is where it gets so radically tough. Stick with me for the next minute on this one. Have any of you watched the show Love is Blind? It's on Netflix. The latest season came out. And um, there's Jimmy and Chelsea. He's got that Southern accent. She's the one who claims she looked like Megan Fox. <laughs> she doesn't. Um, and I was watching the two of them try to share their emotions and their feelings for one another, not about one another, but what challenges they were feeling inside of them. And you know what fascinated me? Now, mind you, these are people in their late 20s, okay? Maybe early 30s. They absolutely struggled to articulate their emotions in a concise way. Let me repeat that. They, they struggled, they struggled to articulate their emotions in the right way. In fact, you could see them, you could see them trying to think of what they want to say because they were, they're trying to formulate what were they actually feeling. See, here's the challenge we're faced with is feelings aren't facts. I didn't make this up. Someone write this down in the chat box. Feelings aren't facts. They're not something tangible. Feelings are like a roller coaster. They're like this. They're all over the map. One minute you're happy. One minute you're sad. One minute you're, you're feeling lonely. One minute you're feeling depressed. One minute you're feeling joyful. One minute you're feeling excited. One minute you're feeling sensational. One minute, you're million, I keep saying million. One minute you're feeling in despair. Emotions are all over the map. Now I've observed, I've observed a difference between men and women. Now I know the ladies are not going to be happy with them about to say, but I've observed the difference between men and women. This is not a statement of fact. It's just a mere observation. Women tend to be more in touch with their feelings. In other words, they allow their feelings to percolate, okay? They allow their feelings to percolate, whereas men oftentimes stuff their feelings. I think we can both agree to this. The challenge is women have a propensity to vomit those emotions and feelings. They vomit it out. It comes out in such an incoherent fashion that we men are absolutely confused in that moment. And men, in the contrast, they dry heave their vomiting. In other words, like, have you ever tried to vomit, but you had no food in your stomach? There's nothing to come out. That's kind of the difference between men and women. Women might have the propensity to vomit all their feelings in an inchoate fashion, and men drive heave their emotions and feelings because they don't know how to, they, they don't even know how to get in touch with them. That's some of the differences I've noticed between men and women. So we're going to talk about, is he avoiding his feelings? These six signs might give you a clue. And, and this really centers around building trust. And I want to be candid with everyone. I recently watched a video from the Gottmans. The Gottmans, if you're not familiar with the Gottman Institute or the two books I recommend frequently from the Gottmans. One of the books is Seven Principles for Making Marriages Work. You could cross out marriage and put relationships and then eight dates by doctors John and Julie Gottman, okay? So today's lesson is actually gonna come from a video I watched of theirs talking about trust is built in the tiny moments. See, isn't that what this is all about? You know, our feelings being acknowledged for one another, but more importantly, the capacity to build trust with one another the capacity to build trust. So Dr. Gottman, um, John Gottman shares the story. He's about to read a book to go to bed. He's about to read a book. He's really excited. He's been wanting to read this book for a while. And he's about ready to go to bed, um, or like read in bed. And, she, and his wife was um, maybe brushing her teeth or something. And he noticed something was wrong with her. He just could sense something is wrong. Okay. Now, the difference between um, the average person 
who would just rather focus on reading their book because that's what their plan was. He talks about something really that builds trust in the relationship and it really acknowledges their partner's feelings. And that is called being attuned, attuned, A-T-T-U-N-E, attuned, A-T-T-U-N-E, attuned. So within attuned, the first, the A stands for awareness of a need awareness of a need. He recognized that his wife wasn't really, you know, wasn't, something was off. He was attuned to her. He was attuned to her. He could read the room. He could read the room. See, a man who doesn't have deep feelings for you, he doesn't read the room. He doesn't know when you're, I mean, he might, and, and by the way, or he reads the room and he, well, we're going to talk about this is really kind of leans into some more of the, the letters here. But first and foremost, he doesn't know how to read the room. He doesn't know how to read your emotions, your feelings. He's not attuned to them. Okay. Hey, it was just 1111 on the clock there. <laughs> okay. Now, the T, the first T stands turning towards, turning towards, turning towards. When you show a desire to connect with your partner, in other words, he recognized something was up with his wife and he turned towards her for connection. See, a person who doesn't have deep feelings for you, they're gonna turn the other way. They're going to avoid, they're going to run away from your feelings. And it's a demonstration that he's not, doesn't, if he's not in, he doesn't have the capacity to build trust or he doesn't have the desire to go any deeper. And as I said earlier in this broadcast, isn't that the whole point of relationship? Look, we are beyond that point of, of dependency. Now, for some people, I recognize that they're in, depend, in a dependent type of relationship, primarily financially. And I'm going to talk about this again as well. But when you're not in that type of arrangement, the whole point of relationship is about meeting each other's needs. That's that's what it's all about. God, I, my, did you hear my voice just kind of crackle and go higher? That's what it's all about in my book. Is that the same for you? Do you feel that's the case? If it is, hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel. And if you want to connect with me directly, do you see this link right here to schedule a discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you? And there's links below as well to connect with me. Okay, he turns towards you. A man who doesn't have, is avoiding deep feelings for you turns the other way. He turns the other way. The next T of a tune is tolerance. Tolerance. Now, I don't love this word, but I, re I recognize why this was used in this example. And that is tolerance is about holding space because it's uncomfortable sometimes to hold space for someone. I mean, especially, listen, we guys, we, we struggle with a woman's emotions. It's just, we do. By the way, ladies, you struggle sometimes when men are emoting too. This is, a, this is challenging depending on how deeply connected you are to another person. So if he's holding space, if he's holding space while you're sharing what's coming up for you, like in the case of the story with Dr. Gottman, his wife had something to share. He turned towards, so he was aware of it. He turned towards her. He held space while she was sharing. See, he didn't run away. Run away is avoiding your deep feelings. And that is a sign that he's probably just not that enough into you or there hasn't been enough trust built. Now, the U stands for understanding. Okay, again, if you are in a dependent type of relationship where the man is the provider protector and the woman is nurturer, he doesn't have to understand anything about you. His job, he's got his role, you have your role. There's no need to have understanding. But if you're in an interdependent type of relationship, the one that I encourage for most people, and if, by the way, someone write this in the chat box, inter, in, interdependent relationship, interdependent relationship. Google this right after this video so you can look up what that means so you can get a better understanding. But it's basically, is it the inverse of dependency? 
I think it's having mutual depending dependency upon the success of the relationship. That's my interpretation of it. But understanding, and if he's clueless, if he's clueless about your feelings, about his own feelings, it's going to be very problematic for him to actually care. And again, when he's when he's feeling scared, when he's feeling unable to meet your need, he's going to run the other direction. Now, the N stands for non-defensive response, non-defensive response. If you haven't read the book, oh, by the way, the, all the books I recommend are listed below. If you haven't read the book, Nonviolent Communication by Marshall Rosenberg. Now, it should have been titled Compassionate Communication. Why is it non, or nonviolent or what's the violence? The violence is a defensive posture. When we get defensive with another person in our communication, when we get defensive. So non-defensive means compassionate listening, compassionate listening at this point. And then off, and then within that compassionate listening is the E, which stands for empathy. Empathy. You know, a lot of people just don't know how to be empathetic. If you've, if you've looked at my chart for emotional maturity and relationship skills, by the way, this is not a fact that's merely an opinion. I believe that this is emotional maturity and relationship skills. I believe 20% of the population has clinical issues, okay? It's just my perception. And while I say 20% of the population is emotionally healthy, I'm being rather generous. Most everybody is just functional, dysfunctional. And by the way, I put myself in the dysfunctional category. I think I'm right here at the cusp, okay? But, I, and I'm owning it, okay? Dysfunctional means that if, as far as relationship skills and emotional maturity, our capacity to be 100% empathetic to another human being, to be 100% non-defensive with another human being. I've got work to do at this capacity. I'm not perfect at this. Sometimes I get defensive. The person that triggers me the most is my son. <laughs> Poor guy. Where's a picture of Colin? There's him right there with his son, or with my my other son, Colin, who passed Connor, who passed away. Why is it with my children? I've got usually got the most defensive with. Um, I think it's because as a parent, we want. Our child is a reflection of us. So when we're in relationship with someone, they're also a reflection of us. So it's very common to get defensive and in that same venue to lack empathy. And if you're in a part with a man who just doesn't have the capacity for true empathy, empathy isn't just, I can feel your feelings. Empathy to me is I genuinely care about your feelings. More importantly, I care about my own feelings too. In other words, I'm empathetic towards myself and towards you. And so bringing this back full circle, attune, A-T-T-U-N-E, awareness. If he's not aware of your, if he's not aware when something's off, it's a sign he doesn't have deep feelings for you. Number two, turning towards. If he turns away for you, from you, that's a sign he doesn't have deep feelings for you. Tolerance. If he can't hold space for you when you're sharing something really critically important to you, that could be problematic. Understanding. If he's just clueless about feelings, he's going to need to be taken to a workshop, a training, therapy. Folks, you're going to have to do a lot of work together if you want to make this relationship work. Understanding non-defensive response, the, the N, the less, look at, it's natural to get defensive, okay? It's natural to get defensive. But a person who does it less frequently is showing deep feelings for you. And lastly is empathy. As I said before, empathy isn't just I can feel your feelings. Empathy is I genuinely care about your feelings. In other words, I genuinely want to build trust with you. And as Dr. Gottman shared in this video, it's the tiny little moments like when he was with his wife, he wanted to read his book, but he noticed that his partner needed something. He's attuned. And when you're attuned to your partner, that demonstrates deep feelings. And when you're not attuned, 
There could be a vast, there could be a majority of reasons why that hasn't happened. And don't forget, it's not going to happen on the first, second, third, fourth, fifth date, or it's not going to happen even when you're physically intimate with someone. Genuine care takes, it requires building the deep roots of trust through emotional connection, financial agreement, social activities, hobbies, mutual interests, spending time with family and friends, you know, and intimacy, both physical and emotional intimacy. These are the building blocks in both the small and big moments, because it's not just about actions matching words to build trust, and it's not just about fidelity. It's, do I have my best, my partner's best needs, best interest at hand? And that demonstrates real trust. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating with you? Please let me know if it is. Post a comment below. I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. I read all of them in the first 24 hours. If you like this video, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you can be notified of new videos. And also, if you want to connect with me, Schedule a discovery call with me. Check out the links to join my group called Midlife Love Mastery. Follow me on Instagram. Get all the books I recommend. Get my book. My book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? A Journey of Personal Development, Self-Help, and Spiritual Work. And also get my dating vows listed below.